So the last section we're going to look at this week is uh, 6.3. Uh, I think we're going to end up breaking it into two days, at least yeah, probably two days. Uh, and it's on basically the transformations. So how do we take the graphs of sine and cosine, shift them left and right, up and down, stretch them left and right, stretch them up and down. Okay, all, all the transformations. So what I'll do first is just kind of describe what sine and cosine are. And then I'll go over how we do the transformations. Um, the transformations are the same as everything we've done all year. So these functions though, are very different than other functions we've studied. Okay? These functions have a repetition to them. It's like they keep doing the same thing over and over. Right? That kind of function that repeats itself, okay, that's called a periodic function. Right? And what periodic function looks like, at least for sine and cosine, is something like that. Okay, you keep seeing the same pattern, essentially the same y values repeated over and over. And the, the key y values that you keep seeing over and over here are 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. And it'll keep repeating. 1, 0, negative 1, 0. That's the pattern in the y values that you keep seeing. So what makes something periodic is that all the different y values keep repeating in the same sequence. And it's that sequence I just told you. 1, 0, negative 1, 0. And there's other values in between that keep repeating as well. I just named the highest, the lowest, and the one in the middle. And they keep repeating over a given set of x values. When I talk about that they repeat over a set of x values, I'm talking about something like from here to here. That's the width of the x values, bless you, that you have to go through before they repeat. If you go less than what I drew in red, you haven't gone through all the values before you're going to see a repeating pattern. So the idea is, if you trace the function over the width of the x values that I said it's going to repeat, you should be able to take that make a copy of it, put it on the end, and it should line up exactly and show you the next, the next cycle of the graph. Okay. And you can do it again, and you get another cycle. So any question on that idea of the y values repeating over that interval of x values? All right, now that interval has a length to it. It's one, two, three, four tick marks, but each tick mark is not one unit. Does anybody have a guess? Think of like, um, like coterminal angles. How many degrees you would have to go through before you get back to an angle that would give you the same answer again? Yeah? It's 360, or what's that in radians? Yeah? Two pi. Yep, 2 pi. So the length of the interval that you have to travel on the x-axis before you see a repeating cycle is 2 pi units. Now you can change that. You can stretch and compress the graph. But what I'm saying is you don't do anything to it. So in theory, if you wanted to see exactly one cycle, one section of that wave, Start at zero, and you could end at two pi. And if you go zero to two pi, that's exactly one cycle. Okay, what if I wanted to see two cycles? I could go zero to what? Yeah? Four pi. Yeah, I could go zero to four pi. And you'll see two cycles of the graph. 
Now, anything that's four pi units wide would show you two cycles. Negative two pi to positive two pi. That's also four pi. So that that number two pi, okay, that's called the, the period length of the graph. So the period is the amount of distance you have to travel on the x-axis before you finish a cycle and the next one starts. And for sine and cosine, it is the same. It's 2 pi. Now, I've been using the two words interchangeably. Period of the graph, cycle of the graph, it's the same thing. What I just put a box around, that is called one, one cycle of the graph. And the idea is if you know what one cycle looks like, then you know what the whole thing looks like. Because it's just going to repeat what's in that box, left and right, forever. So when I have you guys sketch these, generally what I have you do is sketch what should be in that box. You just have to sketch the first cycle of the graph. And then if you have to do a second one, you just copy and paste what you do for the first one. Yeah. Is this related to the viewing? Rectangle for the graph calculator. Yeah. So if I have you specifically um, draw it on the calculator and I say, show me a graph of sine that's exactly two cycles, that would be a good viewing rectangle. Not the only viewing rectangle, but it's it's one. Okay, question on that. So I want to graph those two. Let's graph sine of negative x in y1, and then I'm going to put negative sine x in y2. I want you to see what happens. Okay, so this is the first one, sine negative x, <coughs> and then negative sine x. They're the same thing. When you put a negative inside the parentheses, what does that do? Yep. Well, that just makes what your the sign and the it just turns the number into a negative. For like it kind of reverses what is kind of going on for us. Okay, so, so if you were yeah. to have normal sign of x there, there'd be exact opposites from what's there on the graph. Okay, so yeah, there is something that's opposite when you graph it, and what's that kind of transformation called? Yeah? So that's a reflection, yeah, over the, that's a horizontal reflection, that is over the y-axis. How about the second one? What's that doing? Yeah? A vertical is over the x, yeah, because it's up to down. So this is actually kind of handy because we're going to get back to this much later. You may or may not remember. But the idea is if you have a negative in a sine function, you are allowed to put the negative in front. That's basically what that allows you to do. And visually, when you can take the negative from an argument and put it in front and still get the same graph, that means that your graph has a symmetry. The kind of symmetry that it has is it's called symmetry about the origin. So when you can reflect an image horizontally and vertically, and you get the same picture. That's called symmetry about the origin. And the graph of sine has that. Now, the graph of cosine doesn't quite have that. If you do cosine, cosine negative x and cosine x, those two graphs will look the same. So what kind of symmetry do you think that has? If you can do that kind of transformation to it and it still looks the same as the original. Yeah? Uh, I think it's like symmetry about the origin. 
Mm, it's not the origin because that's the first one. Well, I mean, the uh, y-axis. Yeah. So the graph of cosine is has a line of symmetry on the y-axis. Yeah. And this is kind of another point that's going to come up when we do identities. If you ever have a negative inside of a cosine function, like the cosine of negative 10, you can just get rid of the negative. The negative doesn't make any difference at all in the problem because the graph of cosine is symmetric. So that's, that's a handy identity to know. Cosine negative x is the same as just cosine positive x. All right, we're not focusing too much on the identity right now. I'm focusing more on the visual, okay, the, where, what kind of symmetry the graph has. But any question on the two types of symmetry for these graphs? So when we're graphing sine and cosine, uh, because they're a wave, they're a little more complicated, you really need five points. And the five points that I usually try to find, if I'm going to graph one full cycle, the start, the stop, the middle, the high point, and the low. If you can find those five points, you'll be able to get a pretty good sketch. Um, you can always do more. I usually don't. But you don't want to do less than that. Okay, the high, the low, and basically all the x-intercepts. Now, if I color these in different sections, that's the first quarter of the cycle, second quarter, the third quarter, and then the fourth quarter. Each one of those points, all five of them, are how far apart on the x-axis? Yeah? Each of the points are, are 90 degrees apart just on the x-axis, or yep. half of pi? Yep. Each one of them is half of pi units apart, or you could say they are all 90 degrees apart. So we we're basically finding five points that are equally spaced when we do that graph. And what is the spacing? They're all 90 degrees apart. Yeah. Did you start the microphone thing? I hope so. Yeah, it's on. Too late if I didn't have to do it next class. Um, okay, so any question on those five points? Okay. So based on those five points, what we're going to do is we're going to make a table for sine and then another table for cosine. And these are what we're going to call the original tables. Any transformation is going to be based on the two tables that I give you. Okay. So this, this actually is the graph of sine. But that's an accurate picture of what it looks like. Um, what's the coordinate of the leftmost point in that, in that graph? Zero or zero degrees. It doesn't matter which one. It's zero. It can also be. It's also the technically the same area as two pi. If you were to actually have it be a circle. Yep. So zero and two pi are the same. That the the start of this cycle is really the end of the previous cycle. They share that point. But what's the what's the coordinate for that point? Yep. How long ago the original or zero zero? Zero zero. Yep. So the first coordinate that we're gonna put in our sign table is zero zero. That marks the start. The next point I want to put is right there. Uh, so in radians, what's the coordinate of the second point? Pi over 2, comma, yeah, 1. That's your second one. Pi over 2, comma, 1. What about the third point in that graph? Yeah? Pi 
zero. Pi zero. There's your third one. Okay. Uh, the fourth point. Is that one? Yep. Three pi divided by two. Uh, three. three pi over two comma <coughs> negative one. Yep. And then the last point is the same as the first point. It's the it's the end of this cycle, but it's the beginning of the next. Two pi zero. So those are your five points in the very first positive cycle of sine. And when we do a transformation, that's what we're going to do the transformation to, this cycle. Okay. Now, let's look at the graph of cosine. Um, oh, I already have cosine. So cosine is similar. It's a wave. And the x values are the same, but the y values start at a different point. Okay, so for my cosine table, where do the y values start? They don't start at zero. Yeah? Do they start one point up? Yep. Or one radian? Uh, not one radian, just the number one. So the x-axis is your degree. And the y-axis is the cosine or the sine of that degree. So there's no label for the y-axis. It's just numbers. But the x-axis is radians or degrees, depending on what you may use. Uh, we're using radians. Okay. What's the coordinate of the next, the next point on that red graph? Pi over two comma. Yeah. Zero. Zero. Yep. And then when we're at pi. That's the halfway point in the first cycle. What's the y value? Three pi over two. So when we're at pi, yep. What's the y value? Yeah, zero. zero. So pi zero. How about um, the three quarter mark? Pi is negative one. Pi is negative one. Uh, pi is yeah negative one. Sorry. I don't know why I said zero. So basically, it would be zero. Three pi over two, that next one is zero. Yeah. And how about when we get back to two pi? Right there. Yeah. Yeah, we're back at one. So basically, the y axis ones just shift basically up one, technically, in order to. Continue on for the sign. Yeah, they're just they're just all off by by one. Instead of starting at zero, they start at one. Yep. Basically, just shift everything up, and you have from the y-axis up one kind of thing, and then you got the sign. You just need to add an extra thing there to actually be able to get it number first. Yep. So any questions on that? All right. So again, if we have to do any transformations to cosine, like say shift it up two units, well, then we would add two to all those y values. Okay. If we had to shift down three to sine, we'd take away three from all those y values, and that would shift it down. Right. So that's what that's what we're going to look at. How do we how do we do the shifting and the stretching that kind of stuff? Okay. So make sure you have those tables. Now, when we just do one transformation at a time, well, the nice thing about that is in those original tables I gave you, one column will stay the same and the other column will change. So if we shift it up, shifting up doesn't do anything to the x's. Those would stay the same. All the y's would change. If we shift left or right, that's going to change the x's, but it's not going to change the y's. So for today, we're only going to practice one transformation at a time. We usually just jump right in and maybe have two or three. But we're just going to do one per problem. And the first transformation we're going to talk about is a horizontal shift. With horizontal shift, uh, they give it a different name when it's a trig function. They call it a phase shift. Okay, but phase shift is just a horizontal shift. How do we shift something left or right? Like if you have a function, 
What would you look for if it's moving left or right? Yeah? It would be like x plus or minus. Yeah, inside the function, right? x plus or minus, and it would be inside the function. So now it's a little more basic than, than what we do. I'm just really breaking it down. A fake horizontal shift is when the graph is moved left or right. It's a translation. And what you're going to look for is what we've looked for all along. It could be plus or minus, but it'll be inside the parentheses. Um, a plus would move the graph which way? Left, and a minus would move it to the right. Yep. Now, A technically can be anything, but since the x-axis represents an angle, generally A is a nice number. Like it's usually a, like a 30, 45, 90, 180. It's usually something like that. But remember, you can shift by any amount you want. You could shift it by 12 and a half units if, if they wanted you to. It's generally a nice number. Okay, so hopefully we, are, we already kind of know this. But if you do x minus a number, it's going to shift everything right by that number. And if you do x plus, it's going to shift everything left. So it's the same thing we've learned every function we've studied all of them. Uh, so technically, sine of x minus 4 plus 90 degrees would be equal to the cone. Sine of x. Yes, if you shift the sine um, by 90 degrees on the x-axis, it's the same thing as the cosine. Yep. yep. And we'll do more with that later on. Um, not too much right now, but if you notice that, that sine and cosine are phase shifts of each other, um, it's a good thing to notice. There's cosine and sine. So if you take the graph of what's in blue and you shift it to the right one tick mark, or 90 degrees, it would line up with the one in red. Yep. All right, so how do we take the original table that had the five points and get the new points? Well, when you are shifting left and right, you're not changing the y values. Okay, so nothing's going to happen to the y's in the original table. But we have to get new x's. Okay, and remember what the original x's are. 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So we're going to look at what's been added or subtracted. Let me show you a problem we're going to do next. We're going to do x minus pi over 2. So in this case, we're subtracting pi over 2. And when you subtract, which way should everything move? Yeah? To the right. And the only way x values can move to the right is if they get what? Well, if x values are moving to the right, what's happening to them? They're getting larger. Right? So that's why I say if you see a minus pi over 2, that means you need to add pi over 2 to all the x values, and that will push them all to the right. right? So just like we always have done, it's the opposite. A minus shifts right, a plus would shift left. So look at what's been added or subtracted and do the opposite of that to all the original x's in your table. Okay. So let's try and let's try a patient. Um, can someone remind me for sine? What are my original y values? Because I don't I don't have to change those at all. Just copy them over. Yeah? There's my original y's. 
Now, I'm going to put my original x's, but I'm going to put them a little to the left. Um, what are my original x values for, um, for sine? Jake? 2 over 2 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Okay. Now, we're doing a minus pi over 2. So that means all the x values need to move to the right. So what am I going to do to all these x values to make them move right? Yeah? Subtract pi over 2. Or needs to move to the right. When you subtract, things are supposed to move to the right. Okay. Sorry. Then, yeah. Yep. So we're going to add pi over 2 to all of them. Uh, 0 pi over 2. Where did pi go? Didn't I write that one? That I did. 0 pi 3 pi over 2. And what we put in this box, that's going to be the final answer. All right. What's the first one? What's 0 plus pi over 2? Pi over 2. Pi over 2. Okay. What's pi over 2 plus pi over 2? Yeah. Pi. Yeah. Okay. What's pi over 1 plus pi over 2? 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. Um, what's 3 pi over 2 plus 1 pi over 2? 2 pi. 2 pi, which is 4 pi over 2. And what's 2 pi over 1 plus pi over 2? Yeah? Uh, 5 pi over 2. Perfect. 5 pi over 2. No decimals. Now, these original x values, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, with, are those all equally spaced? How far apart were they all? Pi over 2. Now we shifted every single one of them the same amount over to the right. So are they still equally spaced? Yeah. Yes. Since they are equally spaced, I'm going to use them as my labels on my tick marks. So the first one's going to be 0. Pi over 2. Pi. 3 pi over 2. 2 pi and 5 pi over 2. So I just labeled each tick mark, and you can use those labels because they are equally spaced. That's 90, 180, 270, 360, 450. All right, this is negative 1. That's positive 1. And now you just graph your points. So pi over 2, you're at 0. Pi, you're at 1. 3 pi over 2. 0. Uh, 2 pi, we are at negative 1. And 5 pi over 2, 0. Okay, so that's the new graph. It's been shifted to the right, one tick mark, or 90 degrees. Um, the original would have looked more like this. Close enough. You don't have to draw the original um, on the test. What I'd be looking for is the new one. Any question on that? Okay. Let's try this one. Uh, is that still a horizontal shift? Yes. Yep. Still adding or subtracting inside, but this time it's cosine. Which column stays the same when you do a phase shift? The y. The y. Um, what are my y values for the original cosine cycle? Yep. Maybe. One, zero. Negative 1, 0, 1. Perfect. And my original x values? 
for the cosine cycle. Yep. Okay. And now all of them are going to be shifted by pi units. Which way are they going to get shifted? We're adding pi to the left. So how would we shift all of those to the left by pi? What would we do? Yeah, we subtract. Yep, subtract pi. Okay, so we're going to get negative pi. Next one is negative pi over 2. Pi minus pi gives me 0. How about 3 pi over 2 minus pi? What would that be a common denominator? Yeah. Pi over 2. And 2 pi, take away 1 pi, is 1 pi. So you do have to find common denominators, but usually the common denominators are either a 2 or a 4. So they're, they're pretty quick. Okay, any question on the table? So the way this would be graded, this table would be worth 10 points. You get one point for each x and y value you get. All right, and then the graph, uh, I'd make that worth probably a couple points, maybe two, two points for the sketch. Okay, so the table, that's the most important part. Again, these x values are all equally spaced. So let's, let's use them. So negative pi, negative pi over 2, okay, 0. Pi over 2. Yep. Pi. Pi. Okay, so negative pi, we are at 1. Negative pi over 2, 0. 0, negative 1. <laughs> pi over 2, we are at 0. And pi, we're at 1. Now, it looks kind of like a V-shape. But remember, these graphs are waves. So what you're really sketching is something that looks like that. Okay, so it has has a curve to it. Don't, don't make it a, like, a, like an absolute value function. Okay, nothing when you graph with sine and cosine comes to a, a point. They're all curved. It's, it's going to kind of look something like that. More like a U. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay, any uh, questions on that one? Okay, this is actually one of the harder transformations just because of the arithmetic with the pi. It's not that bad, but um, some of the other transformations are a little easier. Right, let's try this one. Uh, sine of x plus pi over 4. Okay, what are my original y values for sine? Okay, and original x's, which we were starting to remember, 0, pi over 2, pi, 2 pi over 2, 2 pi. Okay, I actually want to move this over. Okay, uh, what am I going to do to all of those x's? Yeah. Subtract pi over 2. So you can write it. I'm really just interested in what you're going to put in this table, but if it helps you to do this, you can. So 0 minus pi over 4 is negative pi over 4. What about pi over 2 minus pi over 4? Well, pi over 2 is bigger than pi over 4, so that is going to be positive. Yep. So this is 2 pi over 4 minus 1 pi over 4. 2 pi over 4 minus pi over 4. How about pi minus pi over 4? 
or 4 pi over 4 minus 1 pi over 4. What is it? Three yeah, 3 pi over 4. Okay. How about 3 pi over 2 minus 1 pi over 4? Over yeah, Liam? Yeah. 5 pi over 4. And 2 pi, take away 1 pi over 4. Over four. If you notice in the numerator, negative 1, 1, 3, 5, 7, the next one would be 9 pi over 4, 11 pi over 4, 13 pi over 4. So once you start to get the pattern, you can kind of go off. Now, look at the numbers of the numerator. Negative 1, 1, 3, 5, and 7. Let's say I was going to put those numbers on another line. All right, so here's here's zero. Where does negative? Where would negative one go? Yeah, yeah, to the left one tick mark. Now, where would one go? To the right. Now, would you put 3 right there? No. No, where does 3 go? The one after. The one after. You have to skip one because those are your numbers. Okay. And then 5 wouldn't go here. You would skip one. And 7 would go there. We're going to set our graph up exactly the same way. Right? You don't even really have 0 in your table. So if you don't put the 0, then I think it, it makes more sense. You're skipping every other one. <coughs> so depending on how you set up your x-axis, you may have to skip every other one. Um, so let's set that up. <coughs> so that's 0. The first x value is negative 1 pi over 4. The next one is positive 1 pi over 4. And then 3 pi over 4 does not go on that tick mark. It goes to the next one over. Negative 1, 0, 1. I don't have a 2 pi over 4. Did I have a 4 pi over 4? Uh, no, I don't think I did. Did I have a 5 pi over 4? Yes. Yeah, I had that one. Did I have a 6 pi over 4? No. So I skipped that. And did I have a 7 pi? Yeah. So just be careful when you set it up. And then the points are 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. 0, uh, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. Any uh, questions on that one? So the last one um, we're going to look at today is the other shift, and that's a vertical shift. Um, how do you know something is shifting vertically compared to horizontally? What do you look for? Yeah. Yeah, it's outside of the argument. It's it's on the end, right? So if this was your argument, you could put it in parentheses like that. Technically, you can leave the parentheses off, and that's still a vertical shift. The only way that it's horizontal is if you group the x and the number together in parentheses. If you don't do that, then it's vertical. Okay. Now, I use the letter D because when we talk about the order, vertical shift is always the last one. Horizontal shift is the first one. That's why I use A. 
So if you had plus a d value, which way would plus move your graph? Yeah. Up. And minus would move your graph? Down. Down. So add is up, subtract is down. Exactly how it is. Yeah. So remember, the vertical shift stuff is always what you would expect. It's the horizontal shift or horizontal stretch that's backwards. Okay, so when we do a vertical shift, we're going to go back to the original table. What column in that table is unaffected by moving something up and down? Yeah? The x's. And what's nice about the x's not changing is those are the ones with pi. So we're not going to have to work with any fractions with pi. No common denominators. We don't have to worry about any of that. So every x value for a vertical shift in tonight's homework is going to be 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. There's the answer to every x column for a vertical shift. So x's stay the same, and the y's are going to change. Well, with the vertical shift, you do exactly what you see. If you have plus 2 on the end, then you're going to plus 2 to all the y's. If you have a minus, two, minus 6 on the end, you're going to do a minus 6 to all the y's. So it's the d value that you add or subtract, but don't do the opposite. Don't do the opposite for a vertical shift. Okay. So any question um, on that? We'll try one or two. I think today we'll do the shifts, and tomorrow we'll do the stretches and then multi transformations in the same problem. Cosine x plus 2. Is the x and the 2 grouped in parentheses? No. Then it's not a phase shift. That's a vertical shift. Okay, when we do a vertical shift, uh, what column stays the same? Yeah, the x. X's. And what are my x's in the cosine table? And off to the side, I'm going to put my original y's. Um, what are my original y's for cosine? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. One zero negative one uh, zero, Sorry. and you have one here. One. Yep. One zero negative one zero one. And now, what are we going to do to all the y values? Add two. So I'm going to write down what we're going to do. And what I'm interested in is what you put in that table. So can somebody tell me all my new y values? Yeah. Three, two, one, zero, uh, two, and then three. That's it. Arithmetic, very, very, very easy. One point, each number you get in the table. Now let's do our um, let's do our sketch. X values are all equally spaced. Let's use those as our labels on the graph. So zero, pi over two, pi, pi over two, two pi. All right, and we got three, two, one, two, three. Okay. Three, two, one. Two, three. That's it. That's good enough. So that's the cosine function. It's been shifted up three. Any question on the table or the sketch? And remember, how far left and right does that graph really go? Infinite. Infinite. So if you wanted to do the next section, all you have to do is trace it again and you get you get your 
your full picture. But the idea is I just want you to sketch one cycle. Okay, let's try this one. Sine of x minus 3. Uh, is Are the x and the 3 grouped together in parentheses? No. Nope. Then that's not a horizontal shift, that's a vertical shift. Which way is that going to shift the graph? Yep. Down, how many? Three. Yep, down three. So which column stays the same? Yeah. Yes. X's. Can someone remind me one more time? My X's for sine. Yep. Zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two. Two pi. Two pi. All right. uh, off to the side, what are my original y values for sine? Yeah. We have zero. Uh, I'm pretty sure this one is one, mm -hmm. then zero, negative one, and then zero again. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. And what are we going to do to all of them? Subtract So can somebody tell me what my new y values for that graph are going to be? Yep. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 3, um, 4, negative 3. There you go. And now to do your sketch, label your x-axis with 0 to 2 pi. Um, so I'm going to put the labels up above this time because my graph was shifted down. I try not to draw through my labels if I can avoid it. Did we go to negative five? No. Um, just helps me if I actually have these lines go a little further. If you use graph paper, that's probably your best option. Okay, that should be easier. All right, so we've got uh, 0, negative 3. We've got, um, actually, you know, can somebody just tell me we got pi over 2, negative 2. How about pi? Negative 3. Negative 3. And then 3 pi over 2? And 2 pi? Negative 3. There you go. So that's your sine function shifted down 3 units. Any question on that? Um, so now if I gave you that graph and said, what's the domain? Um, what would you say for the domain? Infinity. All real numbers. All real numbers. And what about the range? Negative one one. Uh, Not anymore. That'd be the original. Yeah. Uh, two, yeah. The range is all real numbers between negative four and negative two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any question on that? All right. So the homework. Um, there is a PDF online, and there is graph paper. Think on the PDF. So if you want graph paper, you'd have to print it online, or I, I do have some in the back. You could grab a piece. Most of the time, I just draw my own. It's simple enough graph, you can do that. Okay, but those are the seven questions. So you get some phase shifts, some vertical shifts, and um, we'll go over those first things tomorrow.